I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and today I want to talk to you about deep pocket machining. What's all the fuss? Well, deep pockets are hard. You wind up with tool life problems caused by tool deflection, chatter, and poor coolant delivery. Compound that with tolerance and surface finish issues from these same causes, and we're talking headache territory. Deep pocket problems develop any time you're trying to cut more than about four to five times your end mill's diameter deep. But there are a number of techniques that can make deep pockets easier. Let's go through them. Technique number one. First up are tool paths that are particularly helpful for deep pockets and slots. Trochoidal milling is all about arcing into the cut rather than just slamming the cutter straight in full width. If your cam has virtually any high-speed machining tool paths, you may benefit from them when doing deep pockets. If nothing else, they generate lower and more consistent cutting forces, which helps with tool deflection. Another approach is plunge milling. Here the cutter is plunging into the material so that most of the cutting forces are along the axis of the cutter. With radically less side force, your tool deflection is once again minimized. Technique number two. Our next couple of techniques involve your choice of tools for deep pockets. At the very least, you'll want relieved or reduced shanks so the shank doesn't contact the wall of the pocket as you go down successive passes. Another approach is to use a high feed end mill. The advantage is they convert a lot more of the cutting force to a vertical direction which helps to combat tool deflection. Technique number three is to work the pocket in two steps. The initial pass is done with a much larger tool that is plenty rigid enough to go down as deep as it needs to. After removing most of the material with the larger tool, a smaller finished tool that fits into the corners and tight spaces is used to clean up. Typically, this can make the smaller tool's job easier. We can also use corner drilling to achieve a similar result. Let's talk about coolant solutions. As I mentioned, it's hard to clear the chips from deep pockets. They're down deep in a hole, and the coolant has to be aimed properly and with as much pressure as possible. The ideal here is high pressure through spindle coolant. It blasts the chips up and out from the bottom of the hole. Absent through spindle coolant though, programmable coolant nozzles are also helpful. You'll find it's much more critical how the coolant is aimed when you're machining deep pockets. Programmable nozzles save the operator having to manipulate the coolant nozzles at every tool change and lets you fine tune and automate their optimal aim. Let's take a closer look at tool deflection and see why it's such a big problem for deep pockets. The issue we face is the need for a long reach tool versus the diameter of the tool. This results in a lack of rigidity which leads to tool deflection. When we have excessive tool deflection, that encourages chatter, messes up the wall finish, and generally leads to shorter tool life. In fact, we can see the tool life graphically in this chart. It plots deflection as a percentage of chip load versus tool life. For example, if the deflection is half the chip load, follow the dotted line and we see tool life has been reduced to just 60% of what it should have been. The thing is, in some cases, it may be worth reducing tool life to get the job done. The cost of tooling is a relatively small part of the cost of any job. It's really time that represents most of your cost of machining. What's needed is a way to understand these costs and make intelligent trade-offs about them. Here's what you really need to manage tool deflection. There's three tools, and I'm going to show you what they look like in our G-Wizard Feeds and Speeds calculator as an illustration. First, you need to know how much deflection there is, and you need to monitor that deflection relative to some limit you've set. Second, you'd like to make it easy to optimize away tool deflection by reducing the cutting depth, cutting width, or feed rate in the cut. 
Ideally, you want to just make one click in your calculator and have it tell you exactly how much cut depth, for example, to keep you within your deflection limit. Lastly, you want an intelligent tool to help you decide what deflection limit to use. Defaults are fine, but when the going gets tough, it's useful to be able to set the limit and understand what the impact of that limit on tool life will be. That lets you balance all the important variables for success. Deep pockets are hard, but I hope you've been able to pick up some new techniques for dealing with them in this video. I'm Bob Warfield. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back soon with another CNC Chef video. <laughs>